we'll get started. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Wausau. Welcome to February, February 2021. Um, so uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, I don't see that uh, I don't see that Sean is here with an invocation. So why don't we just call the meeting to order? And given that it's February 1st, we have some youth rotars uh, to introduce. So I will turn the floor over to Dr. Peck initially, and he will uh, get us started. All right. Hey, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Wassa. So fired up for the February youth rotors who have joined us here today. And we have a real strong representation from our area high schools. So youth rotors, just remember today's your day to introduce yourself to the clubs. And you know what? This is a bizarre world we're living in right now. And um, this youth rotor experience is a little different this year for our youth rotors. You aren't getting lunch, but uh you know, and, and there isn't that personal contact sitting at a table, but you know what, we're going to make the best of it. And we look at the computer screen and we can see each other's faces. And I see a lot of smiles and uh, we are so honored to have you with us. Um, you have been selected by, you know, your teachers and your counselors um, as leaders and outstanding students that just exemplify the rotary motto of service above self. So today's your moment to introduce yourself to the club with your name, your school, co-curriculars you're involved in at your high school and maybe community volunteering or uh, engagement. And then what are your plans for next year? What would you like to do? So let's get the old ball rolling here and we'll start out with Wassa West High School. So uh, we have Robin and Connor with us today. Robin, why don't you kick off? Well, my name is Robin Kirsch. Um, I go to Wasa West, like you said, and I'm involved in Link Crew, NHS, Student Council, um, Safe School Ambassadors, volleyball, softball, and track. And I'm also involved in my church with volunteer work at St. Matthew's. And next year, I'm going to plan on going to UW Oshkosh to major in biochem and also play volleyball. Awesome. Good. Well, welcome. Um, Connor. Yes, so my name is Connor Knezik, and I am a senior at Wausau West. Uh, I'm involved in a lot of the technology programs uh, at West, uh, PLTW, uh, robotics. I did like an NSF grant that was focusing on, on uh, increasing STEM interest in, in the community. I'm also an avid curler. Um, and I'm actually doing a robotics project for the curling club to help them with some maintenance. Uh, after college, I'm, I mean, after high school, I'm planning on uh, getting a, a degree in engineering physics. have not exactly decided where yet. Great. Well, we're really pleased to have you with us. Thank you, Connor. All right, moving to Northland Lutheran High School. We have Brooke and Sam with us. Brooke, you're up. Hi, I'm Brooke Newman. Uh, good morning, like you said, also a senior. I am involved in, let's see here, volleyball, basketball, and track. Um, I am the president of our small class. And let's see, I'm active in my church. I teach Sunday school and do a lot of volunteer work there. And my plans for the on the most likely going to go to go work for a year and then possibly try in college, but not decided. Okay, that's okay. Well, all right. Well, good to have you with us, Brooke. Sam? And then you also have me. I'm uh, Sam Westenberg. I'm a senior here at Northland. I uh, participate in soccer. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm uh, Sam Westenberg. I'm a senior at Northland. I uh, participate in a uh, year. I'm in the yearbook committee. Oh boy. I'm in the yearbook committee. I'm in uh, National Honor Society. I'm also in the student council. I participate. 
participated in soccer, basketball, and baseball. And for next year, I'm planning on going to UW across to major in communications with them. This is on media studies. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you, Sam, and welcome. All right, we'll go to DC Everest High School. I know Sarah's with us. I don't know if Orion is with us, um, but Sarah, why don't you start out? Um, okay, I'm Sarah. I go to Everest. Um, my extracurriculars, I am on the swim team. Next year, I am swimming Division One at the University of South Dakota. Um, and the clubs I'm in at school are National Honor Society and Key Club. And then I might look kind of familiar because I was here this summer talking about Peyton's promise. And um, Mr. Peck wanted me to just like recap, I guess, of where we are right now. And we're working on um, Amazon Smiles with Peyton's promise. So like if you buy anything off of Amazon, you can like there. If there's more on our Facebook page, if you look there. But um, you can search like Peyton's Promise and part of your purchase like goes to Peyton's Promise and then we buy food for the food pantries there. Yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> well, thanks for being with us, Sarah. Is Orion here? Okay. Well, then we'll head over to Lumberjack High. Representatives from Wassa East High School. We have Ellie and Diego. Diego, why don't you start? My name is Diego Knight. Um, I'm a senior at Wasa East. Uh, some things I participated in were DECA, um, student council, key club, uh, was in football. And uh, something I'm doing on the side is a social entrepreneurship business. Um, and plans after high school are to go to college uh, for something related in business to the University of Madison. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial exploits? Yeah. So I'm trying to start a, like an athletic clothing brand. And because I'm like really interested in, in that, that's like my big hobby. And 10% uh, of the sales uh, that I make will go to a nonprofit organization that aids in the ongoing refugee crisis. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we wish you the best. Thanks for being with us. Ellie. Hi, I'm Ellie Marzinski. I attend Wasa East High School. Um, I dance at DDH Dance Academy and I'm an editor in chief of the yearbook. I'm also involved with Key Club, Student Council, Science Olympiad, and just a few other clubs around school. Um, after high school, I'm not sure I want, I'm not sure where I want to go to college, but I do plan to major in both chemistry and mathematics. Excellent. Well, good to have you with us, Ellie. All right. I don't know if we have anyone from a Newman Catholic High School with us. Tegan, Brian? No one from Newman. Okay. Well, you throaters, again, welcome. It's great to have you with us. You know, we want you to participate. If, uh, you know, you're listening to discussions with the clubs or any of uh, our, our guest presenters, Please feel free to ask any questions. We really love to hear perspectives from the high school youth. We want to get to know you more this month. So at each meeting, um, what we'd like you to do is just basically maybe one of you from each school or maybe both of you, maybe highlight uh, something going on at your school just to kind of keep us informed. And uh, also, uh, don't forget about the Rotary Scholarships, okay? We offer great scholarships that you are eligible for. Um, you know, make sure you, you apply for those scholarships. And if you have any questions about that, your guidance counselors have all of the information and they can direct you to the online application form. So we want you to have such a great experience that someday when you're all settled down in a community and you're thinking about giving back and you think back, hmm, I remember being a youth rotor. That was a great group of people I was able to meet with for a whole month. You know what? I'm going to be a you. I am going to be a Rotarian. That is our goal. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Brad. Uh, appreciate it. Um, 
And welcome to all the youth Rotars. As Dr. Peck said, we, we really enjoy having you here and uh, learning from you as much as you're hearing from, uh, from the club members. So, um, okay, any announcements from club members on anything? I have one. Oh, there we go. Brad, the right. floor is yours again. And then I'll be quiet. All right. But uh, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, uh, Troy Gunderson, a uh, retired superintendent from West Salem, is uh, running for the uh, state superintendent of public instruction office here in Wisconsin. And uh, he's going to have a Zoom forum this Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. for any Wausau leaders, Wausau community members that might be interested in learning more about Troy. So if you're interested, if in the chat section on the screen, you could just drop your email. Again, it's Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. If you just drop your email in there for me, I'll make sure you get a Zoom app uh, invitation. It should be from like 5 to 6, maybe 5 to 5.45. Just would like to answer any questions you might have and provide an opportunity for you to get to know him. Thank you. Brad, are you going to put it in the chat section or have you already done so? No, I, I, I don't have the Zoom uh, invitation link. So I'm just asking for club members that, to give me your, their, your emails Got and it. if you're interested and then I'll, I'll send one out. Got it. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, Jim Campbell. Jim Campbell. The floor yeah. is yours. I was, I'd like to have a one minute update. Um, and I wasn't going to do this, but I've been getting pinged uh, regarding my picture. <laughs> if you're a Rotarian, give me a thumbs up on the reaction if you know what that is a picture of. And I know two people that don't know. <laughs> I don't see any, any going up. Oh, there's one. There's one. Okay. In 1984, Rotary International embarked on the most uh, aggressive service club project in the history of service clubs. And as, you, as Rotarians know, that was to eliminate polio from the face of the planet. They estimated at the time that we would be done by the year 2005, the 100th anniversary of Rotary, the 100th birthday of Rotary, at the cost of $235 million. Well, uh, not quite. Um, to date, Rotary has spent 2.1 billion. Uh, countries around the world have invested 10 billion. And we have inoculated 2.5 billion children in 122 countries. And when they are inoculated, to make sure they don't double inoculate them, they, they put a purple dye on their fingernail. So no, Rosemary, it's not obscene. <laughs> that's what they do. And that stays on there for quite a while. Um, polio has been reduced by 99.9%. .9%. Only two countries on the face of the planet still have active polio, and that is Afghanistan and Pakistan. And you, you well know the... Uh, the, uh, the problems in those countries, uh, the political unrest, the, the population is, is, a lot of it's mobile or clannish and they move around a lot. The terrain is pretty terrible. Um, a lot of people are refusing vaccines, just like they do in the United States to some extent. And a lot of that has to do with uh, the misinformation that is being pumped out into the public about the vaccine that is really not for polio or something else. Rotary this year has, has uh, committed uh, another $50 million and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are gonna match that two to one. So it's $150 million for this year and on suing years until those final two countries and the entire world is polio free. That's my polio one minute update. Thank you, Jim. I was uh, frantically flipping through my, my February issue of, of uh, the Rotary Magazine trying to see if your picture was in there so I could win the prize, but I, I, you got that picture from somewhere else. So. <laughs> and actually all the information I just uh, 
passed along, I I got update updated from that issue. The February. Well, thank you, thank you for the update. I I uh, I sometimes wonder, you know, uh, certainly our youth rotars and even even some of our members, um, myself included, quite frankly, you know, don't, sometimes don't have the uh, sense of how how serious uh, uh, polio was and and still is, but you, you know. Uh, having been been uh, combated by Rotary's efforts over the years. Uh, it came up this weekend with, uh, with my own daughter and my, my parents um, when she asked, you know, asked about polio sort of in, in, in the context of the uh, COVID vaccine discussion. So it was interesting to just realize how, you know, how far removed some of us are from, from those, uh, from those days. So. Okay, other announcements. Deb. Real quickly, uh, Youth Rotars, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate receiving your senior pictures uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we uh, are putting a collage together for the, uh, our, our website page to honor you. And um, but if you could get those to me as soon as possible, I've emailed you, I think once or twice. So you should have my email. If you have an issue with that, just um, put it in the chat or whatever. We can work through whatever we need to do. Thank you so much and congratulations. Sorry guys, I was on mute. Anything else, any other announcements? <clears throat> All right, looks like we're, looks like that covers it for today. Um, Okay, we'll move to happy and sad dollars today. John Townsend is gonna to take us through that. Greetings, Rotarians, guests, and youth Rotars. Good to see you. And for the guests and youth Rotars, our happy sad dollar piece of our noontime tradition has to do with offering up news, both happy or sad, and also fess up dollars, meaning those of us who may have appeared in the media for some particular cause or thing we're related to, those dollars are used to help fund some of our scholarship activities. So that's what we're about to be doing here. So our normal first step would be to talk about happy dollars. So who among you might have some of those? I have one. Um, in March, Mike Thompson, the other founder of the Honor Flight and I made a commitment. He was not gonna shave. And I was not going to get a haircut until we were able to schedule future honor flights. Well, he was on television the other day and he reneged and he shaved or trimmed his beard. So I went after 10 months, <laughs> I finally got a haircut. Um, quite frankly, I was looking, I was kind of a cross between an extra on the Chainsaw Massacre movie and a very ugly woman. And uh, there's about 10 pounds of hair on the floor in the salon. <laughs> So I feel pretty happy that I don't have uh, that extra load on top of my head anymore. So Jim, is that a dollar per pound on the floor? You look like. <laughs> I look like I have a lot less hair. I don't look like a chainsaw massacre. <laughs> Five dollar fine if you don't show us, Jim. <laughs> okay. How do I do that? There he is. There he is. See, yep. it's really short now. He's well cut. <laughs> I'll take the purple right. finger there off of there now. <laughs> All right, other happy dollars. Well, while you're thinking of it, I'll, I'll add one in here. Uh, I uh, want to express this happy dollar in appreciation for three other Rotarians who I was successful in recruiting to help me in this year's scholarship committee, since uh, Dr. Peck mentioned that to you youth scholars earlier, the uh, scholarship deadline, by the way, is, is February 15th, so a couple weeks away. And we will uh, convene sometime late March and early April as a committee to make selections. But those members who were kind enough to jump on board and help out this year include Jean Tehan. And Kathy, I know you're on board here. Kathy Drangler, thank you so much for joining and then Ann Herter Rapp. 
from uh, the uh, University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, Wausau. It's a mouthful of a name for a location, but she also will be joining us. She's had some conflicts with some things at work that have prevented her from joining us uh, in our meetings. But I'm excited to have the four of us along with Sue Nelson from the Community Foundation get together. And uh, this year uh, we're looking at at least five scholarships, more to come on whether something beyond that is possible, but uh, I'll offer a happy dollar for that. I appreciate the uh, volunteerism of our club members. Other happy dollars. All right, any sad dollars out there? If we're not sad, we must be happy. Any other fess up dollars? We started off this group meeting today kind of quiet. So I guess Matt, it's back to you. Uh, John, right. oh, well, John, I had, well, I, this is Gilly and I'll, I'll put in a happy dollar. Okay. Uh, we had the ribbon cutting ceremony for Culver's. So if you uh, have an itch for some fresh custard, come stop at the Rib Mountain Culver's, which just opened today. Very nice. Any other happy, sad, fess up? All righty, I guess maybe I'll throw one more happy dollar now that I think about it because this week I think, Dennis, didn't we get a communication from you about the launch of our new website for the club? And uh, I think D Dennis deserves a ton of credit for the effort that he's put into supporting that significant change for us. So thanks, Dennis, for all your work. I'll put a happy dollar in for that too. All right, Mr. President, I'm gonna hand it back to you. All right, thanks, John. We'll, uh, we'll work on that for next week. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll separate these folks from their wallets some way, somehow. So we'll, uh, we'll do it, so. Okay, uh, I think that takes us to our program introduction today. So John Overland, uh, I think the floor is yours to introduce our speaker. Sure thing. So I'm glad to introduce uh, Mike Murphy to everybody. Somebody, some, some of you may know him. He's um, lived in the Los area for a while. I've gotten to know him quite a bit in the last 18 months as one of our new board members for Sam Oset Council. He's been on the board for two years, so a little bit before I got to Wausau. And uh, as I, I got to know Mike, I was intrigued that, you know, he's not only a CEO of Surgical Associates, but he had a construction project that he was working on. He's going to share with you today. I had a significant project myself in the Twin Cities for a scout building that was a 40,000 square foot building. So I could... Uh, I could attest to some of the pains and anguish and late nights that Mike has gone through. But also when you do a building uh, like he's done or I've done, you tend to have a little bit keener eye, I think, for architecture. Um, it actually was something that my uh, son decided to go into because I was working on a building and he was looking at the blueprints behind my back and I didn't even know that. So uh, he's a third year student at the University of Kansas in architecture. But so Mike has been CEO of uh, Surgical Associates since 2011. Prior to that, he spent 15 years with Aspirus. Um, he used to be a Rotary member for Early Bird Rotary. Um, he's been a high school sports official for the past 30 years. He has two grown children, Matt, who's 27, lives in the Salt Lake City area, and Gretchen, 24, in Columbus, Ohio. And Mike's going to take you through their new facility at the Surgical Associates built here in the last several months and um, share with you some of the services they do, too. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, John. Can you hear me okay? Good, a lot of head nods, thank you. Matt, I'm gonna share my screen, is that okay? Yes, uh, that you should have that ability, Mike, so. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully you're all seeing a introduction slide. Is that correct? And I appreciate the, uh, again, I've been a part of Rotary and been in the Wausau community for many years. Uh, I had to, uh, Brad, thanks for the uh, reintroduction of the, uh, the Rotary name change. Uh, as I started my presentation, I quick had to change your name from uh, Wausau Noon Rotary to Rotary Club of Wausau. Uh, I didn't realize there was a, an effective change there. So I did some fine typing here momentarily. So yeah, I'm really excited to, uh, A, to be part of a group. There's a lot of uh, familiar, uh, very, very uh, excited faces uh, in your group. 
Uh, I've always been appreciative of your Ruth Rotars, uh, youth Rotars, excuse me, and uh, everything that the youth can bring to Rotary. It's a, it's a great opportunity for all of them. But today I'm gonna to talk about, uh, as John indicated, our project that you may have seen up on the corner of Highway 52 and 17th Avenue, uh, more formally known as 2606 Stewart Avenue, uh, which is the proper address uh, for our building. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through some slides. I have a number of pictures in, in, this, in the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free just to interrupt and, and talk. I don't have my chat window up at the moment. I've got to, so I have to uh, just uh, ask your questions. So I wanna talk about three things. Uh, really, what is the corporate ownership of 2606? Kind of the building development and some of the features of, of, of what we built uh, and who are the tenants and the services that are provided in this space. So 2606 LLC is a joint venture uh, partnership between Godorzi Properties and Pine Ridge Investors, which is the real estate holding corporation for surgical associates. Our surgeons are, are, are owners of our business uh, we have our own real estate holding corporation. Uh, the venture started in 2018. Surgical Associates is a very, uh, has been a very fast growing uh, surgical practice, uh, not only in the Wausau community, but throughout North Central Wisconsin and quite frankly, the UP of Michigan. We do, we do kind of mimic the Aspirus footprint. We're, we're a partner of Aspirus's. Uh, we're part of Aspirus network. Um, and so where Aspirus goes, kind of Surgical Associates goes. It's been a real value of medical, the, me, the medical uh, community uh, in, in, the, in the Wausau area. But as we looked at our strategic growth uh, through uh, in the end of the 2020, 2010s, we knew we needed, we were outgrowing our current building at 2400 Pine Ridge Boulevard. So we needed to add another space. We simply, we wanted to expand for our plastic surgery space and our med spa space. Um, and our goal was to, but our goal was to stay near the Aspires Medical Campus where our doctors still operate, uh, both at the, at the hospital as well as the surgery center across the street. So there's been, a, there's a lots of land available in the Wausau community, lots of real estate that took us out to Weston, out to South Red Mountain, et cetera. Um, but this land was really, the, uh, really the, the key spot that we zeroed in on. As we started our conversations with, with Chuck Adorzi and his team, uh, we certainly realized that uh, they had partnered with uh, ENT and Allergy Associates directly across the street. And uh, we're really developing some very niche building models in the Wausau community. Um, so we met with them, uh, developed our LLC, got everything together uh, and broke ground in 2019. As John indicated, as many of you know, as we, as we started our project, COVID hit early in 2020, which created an even bigger challenge for us. You know, I, I quickly was told to throw out my project plan and we will be in the building when we get in the building. Um, my project plan at one time called for us to be occupying of, of March of 2020 and no fault of anybody's own, but we had multiple factories closed down multiple times with COVID. We've had COVID on our job site where an entire uh, unit of, of construction had to completely walk away from our building. And uh, it, it, it delayed us a little bit longer than what we really appreciated. Uh, but with that said, we are we, we, we're very happy with where we landed. We landed on a 32,000 square foot, sorry about the typo, 32,000 square foot building. Um, this is one picture of it that was taken recently. Um, I'll walk through it, I'll walk through it a little bit, but it's this, this is a, a very impressive. I, I, I enjoy this picture. Uh, it really is the dynamic, shows the lighting, shows the windows. A uh, couple of features, you'll see the um, the, the peak here and that structure that intentionally came from, uh, as we looked at our, uh, our Met Spa, we had named that Eleve in 2018. And that Eleve was, the purpose of that term was, we want people to know when they come to Surgical Associates that they can elevate themselves. They can, it's a healing place. It's a place where we can make things better. We also recognize the fact that we are in the uh, shadows of Granite Peak as well. And we wanted to recognize the fact that the elevation differences do exist in this community. And I think this, that's, that's where that peak, that, 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 that pinnacle really tied together for us. One of our key features of our, of our building, as you saw in the last slide, are our windows. The windows are, are, are an interesting uh, dynamic. There's a, a, there's a, there's a lot of them, first of all. But all the windows on the south and west facing of the building 
are automatic tinted windows. They're, they're smart windows, if you would. So each window actually has a electronic component that runs down to our server area that actually senses the, the brightness on the window and does automatic tinting of the window. Now, as you look at this slide, you will see some differences in the tinting uh, between one and the other. That's still, uh, that's, that's not by design. Some people think that looks very cool, that's very artistic, but actually that those windows are, we, we, we had to open the building and our window uh, manufacturer did not come through with all of our tinted windows. And so we just had to put some temporary glass in. So eventually in 2021, uh, the rest of our windows will become tinted and they will become kind of all sized together. But again, I, I think this picture kind of looks kind of nice and uh, the artistic approach looks, looks good as well. The entryway is a two-story entryway. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, artistic entryway. As you look at the, the decorative uh, 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 color schemes that we put in place, we look at our stairwell. Um, these are actually glass uh, stairs that came to us from Oregon. Uh, and again, these were another slight delay in our, our process. We kind of hit the triple whammy on a, on a Portland, Oregon. This summer they had fires they had riots and they had COVID, which shut down their plant. So multiple reasons why we were delaying our shipping of our stairs. But again, we adjust, we pivoted like everybody else did in 2020. And uh, I think the end result continues to be phenomenal. Just another look at those, those stairs, the lobby becomes a very inviting space uh, for individuals as they, as they come into the, to the building. We do have underground parking. This has been a, a feature not only for uh, my surgeons, but also as we look at, I'll talk in our next slide about some future expansion space and future tenants that may be in this building. We have 18 parking stalls uh, underneath here. Um, actually, and, and just an interesting side note, on Saturday, we actually held a, va a COVID vaccination clinic for uh, 1Bs for 65 and older people and we did it in our parking garage. We had people drive in, they stayed in their cars, they pulled into their stalls. Our nurses went, vaccinated them in their stalls and they pulled out. Uh, we vaccinated 96 people on Saturday morning uh, through that process, it worked very well. On the second floor of our building on the east side, we, 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 we do have a significant shelf space. This was a decision point that as a corporation we had to make, do we build this now or do we build it, or build it out later? And it really was a, a opportunity for us to show off our building a little bit, but it's also a financial consideration uh, as a, a, to, to build it out now. But we have about 6,000 square feet of shell space available on the second floor that we'll be looking actively marketing and looking for a tenant for uh, that will help partner with our medical and our uh, dental practice tenants down below. Who's in the building? Surgical Associates, as I mentioned. Surgical Associates also has a division that you may have, you may see the name on the building called Eleve. Eleve is simply a division of Surgical Associates that focuses on plastic surgery, aesthetic care, and a new service that's going to be provided called Vitality, which is a health and wellness program. So Eleve will be on our first floor uh, in conjunction with Dr. Cecilia Strode and Jessica Gaffney. Our breast surgery program is also uh, on that first floor. Second floor for us is our general surgeons. These are the general sur elective general surgeons that see a lot of patients in the office, do surgery on them, and then do their post-op care in the office as well. Our, our tenant partners uh, is Inspired Dental and NPC Endodontics. Uh, these are providers, Dr. Ali and Dr. Berjar were providers in the community, uh, and they look to continue to grow their dental practice uh, in our building. A little bit about the space that Surgical Associates built. We, again, work very closely with the design. Uh, the dental practice worked with Godorzi specifically, so I don't know as much of at their attention. I don't have pictures of their space. Um, but we spent a lot of time on the design of our space. We have about 8,000, Surgical Associates rents about 8,000 square feet on the first floor and 8,000 square feet up on the second floor. Our Elevate space, again, as you walk in, it's a very different medical field, but it's still a medical, it's still a medical clinic. Um, we really wanna highlight the openness of our space, our color schemes, uh, our little uh, more pastel -y, softer tones. Uh, we really like our, our teal color. Uh, I wish this was lit up on the back. It's a very nice uh, light up E. 
um, very large lobby as you come in. And then we have a separate waiting area for patients. The one thing we learned in our design, when we design in a pre-COVID state, is we don't need as much waiting room as we, as, we, as we designed. It's great waiting space, but in COVID, as you know, if you've been to a medical office, our goal is to try to get you back into an exam room as quickly as possible. So to limit the social distancing that might exist. And we'll, I'll show you that also on the second floor. So it's, it was a, a COVID became a, 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 a bummer for us from our design uh, as well. But as you see, we adjusted, we put up our, we put our sneeze guards up. We always, always wanted to make sure we had privacy for, our, for HIPAA, make sure our patients did, were able to present themselves in a very private state. One thing that is a big feature for our building and ENT has this, ENT Allergy Associates has the same, is the use of barn doors. These are uh, very uh, silent proof barn doors, but barn, barn doors in, the, in a clinic design have become, from my perspective, is incredibly valuable for the patient experience. Um, it really saves on room in a, in a patient. You know, if you think about what you're, every time a door swings open, and again, these all have to be ADA compatible. We have to have wide doors for both our bariatric patients, our, our, our handicapped patients. It makes it extreme, the experience very well. Uh, I, I didn't, if you ever come into our building, it'll be it's interesting. These design, the last half inch are auto closing. So it's a very soft closed barn door. So it's not a very, my worry was it was gonna look like a jail cell and it was gonna have a hard wham. You're in the room now with the doctor and you're stuck in jail. It doesn't, it, that, it comes across very soft from that regards. We have two procedure rooms in our clinic. Um, these are very high-end procedure rooms. These we, we do some small um, lumps and bump stuff, and but we're advancing very quickly with our plastic surgeon. Again, for our patient experience for plastic surgery, we want to be able to provide as much in our in our clinic as possible. Certainly, going into Aspires is a great healthcare system, but going into a hospital for an outpatient service or an ambulatory service becomes can be, can be a bit intimidating. So we try to develop some things in our office. These are these are not operating rooms. There's not a surgery center. There's simply cl clinic procedure rooms. Well, we're going to be doing things like cash pay plastic surgery, like maybe a tummy tuck, maybe a, a liposuction, things that people are coming to us for body contouring that we want to do. Um, we still will use Wassa Hospital extensively. We'll still use Pine Ridge Surgery Center extensively. But this was just uh, an area for us to build out more capacity to do those, that, some of that procedural work. As you can say, tell, you know, it's very, it's, it looks, uh, you know, like an operating room might, uh, has its OR lights, operating bed. Um, so we're just starting this process. We don't, we, we, we have just a couple of active physicians working in this space at this time. To support that, we then obviously have a pre and post operative area. So again, you look at our clinic, it does appear you know, that we can take care of the procedural things as well as the pre and post operative things. Up on our second floor, we, uh, we again have, have a typical uh, receiving area, um, but our waiting area is, is kind of one of our unique designs. Uh, again, our waiting area was built, it's a very large waiting area, designed pre-COVID. And our attention here is we really wanna to get to a place where we can provide educational uh, forums um, as well as consider social activities up on this space. We have a, uh, a large screen television mounted on the wall here. You can't see behind this pillar where our physicians are able to give talks. Um, so again, as COVID settles down in 2021, 22, we'll start uh, marketing uh, procedural uh, things up in this space. Again, with the dimming of windows, we have a lot of privacy available to us, um, but that's why this space is larger. Um, and then uh, it coincides then with our, with our break room and then once, one thing you can see as you drive by the building, we're kind of, we're kind of proud of is our patio. Uh, you see on this slide, um, this space looks out over, uh, looks out over Red Mountain. Um, we are super excited to wait for spring and summer to be able to host some events out on, this, out, out on our patio. Uh, we think that's gonna be a, a, a real opportunity for our staff, uh, as well as some of our, 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 our patients and our partners. Uh, to take advantage of this of, of this space, but uh, not much going on there in the wintertime in Wisconsin, obviously. But uh, um, we'll start to be building on uh, on that on that as well. A 
again, because we are uh, healthcare providers, we, we we're very into wellness in our organization. So we bit, actually built an, a, a, a fitness center in our office for our staff. Um, this will also be used by our vitality, our health and wellness patients. We have a nurse practitioner that will be doing co uh, coaching for our, uh, our health and wellness program. One of the studies she does is a, it's called a, a VO2 test, uh, which actually uh, can measure your, met your metabolic burn rate. And we'll do that in this space on the treadmill. So our, our coaches will bring patients up to the space. We'll actually use uh, personal trainers out of the community and we'll allow them to come in the space. We really want to, uh, so, but I can tell you that I use this space quite a bit. Dr. Steve Wyland, uh, our president of our group, will, is in here almost every, almost every night. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a great opportunity for all of our staff to come in uh, whenever they want. We did build out a, a conference room that we enjoy very much uh, up in the space. It does have a, a great view. We do have uh, uh, blinds that do come down uh, in our conference room. Um, and again, knowing that we are in the digital area, a lot of our meetings are you know, uh, virtual just like this. So we wanted to put in technology that supported that. Uh, the table was, uh, has all of our electrical USB connectivity. So anybody that comes in with a laptop can, can connect up and display up on the screen. Um, if anybody needs to charge a phone during a meeting, though, all that technology is interbuilt in the table. One of the things that I was very passionate about is I did not want cables circulating the table. So all the electrical, all the data is all built up to the floor and came, comes into the table. So we're, we're pretty happy about uh, how that room turned out. So again, I talked a little bit about the services as I talked through uh, our design. Uh, first floor, again, Elevate Med Spa. So you now know when you drive by, what the heck is that Elevate thing? That is our, that, that's a division of Surgical Associates is our aesthetics, where we do skincare, facial work, uh, body contouring, our vitality, health and wellness, we talked about that, uh, our health assessments, uh, our supplements we, we, that we, we bring as part of a patient into our program. Dr. Alexi Markoloff is our board certified plastic surgeon. Dr. Cecilia Strode is our breast cancer surgeon. And then on the second floor, our general surgeons, Dr. Weiland, Sweet, Larson, Olson, Whitley, and Breebrick. So that's what we built. Uh, I'd love to have any questions about what we built, who we are. Mike, uh, this is Matt. Um, I, thank you for your presentation. I thought it was great. And uh, it's great to, having driven by that building as it's been constructed and kind of looking at it from the outside, it's great to get a little peek inside. Um, I think I've got a couple of questions that, that you touched on some of them uh, to some degree, but I think what I heard you say is that this is a, an, an expansion of and not a replacement for the existing Surgical Associates Clinic facility right. and also Pine Ridge Surgery Center is still going to be used as well. Right. Can you just speak to is is the existing clinic facility going to be used for specific purposes as opposed to this one could you just touch on that a little bit sure. thank and then you i have a follow-up question too but sure thank you for bringing that up so surgical associates uh again with our growth we have 16 surgeons in our practice five of those surgeons are fellowship trained vascular surgeons that do uh, all uh, lower extremity vascular care uh, so that's anything, uh, anybody knows, has, needs a stent placed, all of that vascular surgery care, ultrasound, all those services are staying at the 2400 Pine Ridge Boulevard building. So we're re we, we, re we repositioned the, the, the space over there to really broaden our vascular position. We do have some capacity uh, for other space. For example, we took, we were renting space for our revenue cycle. Our billing department uh, was offsite. We've now brought them back into 2400 uh, as well. But our vascular program is, is a really a unique program. We've got the largest uh, subset of vascular surgeons uh, in the state outside of the University of Wisconsin. We, uh, we touch a lot of patients, but the, probably the most unique position that we've done there is we do what are called office-based angios, uh, which are high inter, uh, highly intensive interventions where my surgeons will put a, a catheter through your groin and it deals with any occlusions in the lower extremity. So if you have uh, pain in your legs, for example, usually going towards the older, the older individuals, the seniors, 
they, they often have occlusions, kind of claudications in their arteries where we can open those up in the clinic for going even having to worry about that hospital visit. So that's 2,400. Pyra Surgery Center is, a joint, is another joint venture uh, business between Surgical Associates, Aspirus Wassa Hospital is actually a partner in that business, as well as uh, Urology Associates and Family Foot and Ankle. So it's a multiple of physicians that go that, that practice at Pine Ridge Surgery Center for ambulatory surgeries. They, those are surgeries that are, that are high-end surgeries, generalized that, where pe people can be discharged within 23 hours. So it's everything outside of, doesn't have to go into a hospital setting. Okay, so my, my, my second question was, um, coming into this presentation, you know, I wasn't entirely certain I had some hunches, but what, what the med spa concept entailed, and you've, you've really touched on that, but I suspect that's still, you know, that's a new thing kind of for central Wisconsin, probably maybe even for Wisconsin and the Midwest generally. Can you speak to that a little bit more? And is that something that is kind of taken hold in, in various markets across the country and maybe expand on that a little bit? Sure. So in, as I mentioned, in 2018, as part of our strategic plan, at that time, there was a, a, a deficit of plastic surgery in, in, the, in the community. And so we went to market. Now, Aspirus has certainly brought on a couple of plastic surgeons. Um, but prior to that, we brought on our plastic surgeon. And one of the pieces that meshed together is this aesthetic practice, which is facial improvements, kind of like the, the skincare things with our plastic surgeon. And we actually got jump started our aesthetic business in 2019. We brought an esthetician on board. She does things, you may have heard the terms cool sculpting, which is freezing the body fat, uh, manipulating it, making changing that body contour to a degree. Um, this was an interesting strategic development for us is to move in this aesthetics market uh, to really uh, garner that, 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 that mesh with plastic surgery uh, so well. And it's, it, it, it's, it was, took us a lot of market analysis to understand what this means, but we're really excited about not the, the whole, the, all three components now, and that is really that health and wellness piece, because we think Eleve is about taking care of the whole body. Sometimes it's going to be the face, sometimes the superficial, but we think the internal piece, which are things, which includes everything from, you'd be amazed at how well our, our health assessments go with things like sleep. I'm wearing an aura ring, which every night measures my sleep, how well I sleep, and my nurse practitioner coach reviews that on a periodic basis, because sleep is such a derivative of health that this is part of our, that, whole, that whole vitality program that we're going to be launching uh, in the next month uh, to a community perspective. So MedSpa Aesthetics, is, is, it's growing. You know, uh, we, we really look at people that, we, we learn that people will travel for things like Botox injection. The Monaco market was a highly underserved area. Um, we get a lot of people out of the Northwoods uh, for, uh, for injections and for, for facial care, skincare products, et cetera. We knew that we had paid people in our community that were traveling to Madison for these services. In fact, one of our doctor's wives told us, I go to Madison for this, I wanna have it done locally. So just like everything else that Aspirus does and Surgical Associates does and all of our clinical partners do, we wanna bring as, keep as much care local in the Wausau community as possible and provide the great depths of services that we can do. So aesthetics is just one small piece of that. Interesting, thank you. Other questions for Mike? And Mike, I don't know if it's helpful maybe to, to stop sharing your screen. We can see oh. everybody, as many people as we as we can here. Mike, I, Mike, I have a question for you. And that is like your doctors, are, are they doctors at Aspirus um, or, or other healthcare providers? Uh, and are, are, you know, do people get referred from their doctors at Aspirus to, to, to your offices? How, how does that work? Sure. Well, the, the, the big piece to that is, is, is the Spirus Network, right? So Spirus Network, Inc., a and I, you'll hear the term. a and I is the contracting body for Spirus, but the primary care piece of that, as well as all the independent physician practices associated with us. I heard that Kathy Rowling is on the phone. Kathy's my colleague over at GI Associates. All of the independents are part of that Spirus Network. So we're independent. We're privately held corporations. We're we're, bit, we're, we're autonomous business individuals, but we are we, we partner with Aspirus. So the patients that come to us either come to us from Aspirus Primary Care um, 
that or self-referred to, to any of the independent specialists, but we're contracted, all of our insurance products are together. So if you go, if, if you go to an Aspire's primary care physician, you can come to Surgical Associates. Um, it's a little bit different. Uh, and obviously that game changes quite a bit. Many of you may have heard the announcement a couple of weeks ago with Aspire's acquiring some Ascension hospitals and Ascension organizations. That Aspire's organization groups tremendously or will be growing tremendously in 2021. And, uh, and we're excited to be part of a partner of Aspirus in that regard. Gotcha. But we Thank do you. operate only at either Aspirus uh, facilities, Aspirus Wassa Hospital, or at Pine Ridge Surgery Center. Aspirus does have other surgeons in some of their smaller community hospitals, like Medford has a couple, Anago has a couple. But we're really positioned with our physicians and our relationship with Aspirus. We're kind of the, the high end, the tertiary care provider that, again, uh, if someone is, needs a cancer surgery or breast cancer surgery, those mostly are brought to Wausau after that high-end care. Just like you can imagine people getting referred to the University of Wisconsin. Right. People don't have to go to UW any longer. They can get that, those services in, in, in Wausau locally now. Gotcha. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Mike, this is John Townsend. Good to see you again. Hi, John. And uh, is that facility that's referred to as plastic surgery on Rib Mountain Drive uh, part of yours, or is that is that part of the Aspirus system? Yeah, that's uh, Aspirus has has two plastic surgeons that's that staff that clinic, uh, and they do their work uh, predominantly at, at, at Wausau Hospital and into an ambulatory surgery centers. But that's uh, that's that those are two plastic surgeons that uh, Aspirus employs. Okay. You mentioned I have a question. That. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, the uh, the uh, acquisition was acquisition of the Ascension um, providers. Does that change future plans for the use of this facility? Uh, does that mean oh maybe we should add more upstairs? Um, is that a factor in, in future planning? So we're we're very happy that uh, that uh, the Aspires and Ascension have come to the relationship that they have. We think we're our, the big value for our practice is the, uh, the the our vascular services will continue to grow. Ascension did not have strong vascular surgery; they actually referred all of their their patients to Appleton. And so again, keeping healthcare local, we'll think those vascular patients will be able to stay in our Wausau community. The other big area, unfortunately, that we'll we'll see growth in. Is our trauma and our acute care pro, our acute care surgery program? Uh, again, those patients were flown to other healthcare systems. Uh, Aspirus has an extremely strong trauma program. You've seen their medevac their medevac system. They now acquire Ascension Ascension system. So those seven other hospitals will again feed those critically ill people to Wausau. And we know that we are actually we are actually we know that we have to grow our trauma surgeons to support that additional volume. Hey, Mike, it's John Overland. I heard you talk about windows are certainly on your punch list. And I know you and I talked about that several months ago where just stuff was going so slow. Anything, I'm just curious, anything else significant that's on your punch list that you're working on or or is it really just the windows? That's the windows thing? is the big thing. Um, you know, it's been great. Uh, we've been in here now for three months. People have, have people that have come through it, you know, they said, boy, you look like you've been here for five years. We've had a lot of dedicated people that really worked hard to, get this up and running very, very quickly. And I'll give us, uh, again, one of the chat, one of the opportunities that we've been able to leverage is we do have a, in our partnership with Aspirus, I contract and I lease all of my IT infrastructure from Aspirus. So I'm on the same EHR back, backbone as uh, that their primary cares are. So we're easily able to share medical record information. It works extremely well. But the beauty of it dirt for our transition move is I, I had physicians at 2400 Pine Ridge I simply took, unplugged their computer, unplugged their telephone and plugged it in here and they're up and running. The, the doctors never felt a beat in the change of their, their, their clinical practice. But John, I will tell you the big punch list item that I do have, and many of you will realize this when you try to come find this, is we do not have good signage uh, up on the roads yet. So people, have a, people can see our building, but they can't find us sometimes. So our, we, we're looking for new signage on Stewart Avenue um, to come in to, as an entryway to come in. That's probably one of the, the biggest deficits that's a short-term need for us right now. Interesting. 
Well, we're uh, we're about two minutes away from from uh, one o'clock, so why don't we wrap it up, Mike? Thanks again. This was a wonderful presentation. We very much appreciate you taking the time and and joining us today. So, thank you all. Um, our four, we're, we close the uh, meeting with our four way test as we always do. Jim Campbell is going to take us home with that. I will. In 1932, the president of Club Aluminum, after going through the depression, called all his employees into a room. And he said, from this day forth, we are going to change the way we do business because they were going out of business. And we're going to live by these four principles. Every employee. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Club Aluminum is still thriving. If you look in your pots and pans cupboard, you may have some. And one other corporation that's a resident in Wausau also lives by these same principles. Do you know who that is? Walgreens. Thank you, Mr. President. And and ro and the Rotary Clubs. Yes, and, other than yes. Rotary. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jim. Very much appreciated. Thank you, everybody. We'll close the meeting. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Take care. Mm -hmm.